Okay, so our third speaker, Michaela de Dominicis, is going to talk about why securing clean energy is the number one challenge. Off you go. Okay, so five minutes to explain to you why securing clean energy is the biggest challenge that we are going to face in the future. So, first of all, so you are already familiar with the global heating, so the herd had warmed up by one degree, starting from 8080, so we are heating up, and what we are seeing right now are the symptoms of this. So, coral reef are breaching, the ice is melting, we are seeing more frequent floodings and storms, and maybe at some point people will need to be released because where they live is going to be inhabitable, maybe because it's too hot, or maybe because they are flooded. And so, since Height is melting, the temperature is increasing, the sea level is rising, so maybe by 2050 the planet is not to be a place where we want to live anymore or we are not able to live anymore. But these are just the symptoms. So what is causing this? So this is caused by CO2 emissions and actually the 75% of the CO2 emissions that we have right now in the atmosphere are due to coal, oil and gas. And we are using coal, oil and gas because uh, we need to satisfy our energy needs for electricity, for the heat and for transportation. So if the global heating is caused by CO2 emissions coming from fossil fuels, what's the solution then? So we need an energy miracle to tackle the climate crisis and it's not only me to think about it think about it, like Bill Gates or David Attenborough. So we need to shift from fossil fuels to clean energy. That's the solution then. So right now, this is the global energy consumption. And you can see oil, coal and gas are on the top. And we have just the hydropower and the renewables on the bottom. So we need to shift. And we have many different forms of renewable energy. So the hydropower is the most developed one so far. But then we have wind, we have solar, and others renewables. Um, so we have the wind power. We are familiar <coughs> with, the wind, with the wind turbines inland, but also offshore. And actually, UK is one of the very good places where we can have offshore wind. But we can have also uh, wave power. So we can generate energy from the waves. Here we have just a picture of one of the wave converters. But right now, scientists and engineers are working on different type of converters to find what's the best one to use. So this is a technology this, that is under development. A technology that is more mature is the tidal energy. So we can use something that is similar to the wind turbines, but underwater, and are the tidal turbines. And these are moved by the ocean currents. So the fastest are the currents, the more energy we can extract from the ocean, and actually, uh, in this map, you have all the places in the world where tidal energy is, um, is, uh, is available. And UK is one of the best places where to extract energy from the tides. And that's why I moved to this country, because I really wanted to work on this topic. And this is a map of the available tidal energy in Scottish waters. Actually, we were asked by the Scottish government about having some advices on the, en of the amount of energy that is available. And I was looking to 10 different locations and I was stimulating like having thousands of turbines underwater and what I got is that if we place like 20,000 turbines underwater we are going to get 3.6 gigawatts of energy and this is 10% of the UK electricity demand. So on average, this is the average electricity demand for the UK, so what we can get from the dice is 10% of that. Of course, if you're going to do something like this, if this is our cure to the global heating, we want to know if there are going to be side effects. Uh, of course, whatever you put into the ocean is going to perturbate the environment. So we are going to change the currents slightly. So in some areas, they are going to increase where it's red. In some other areas, they are going to uh, decrease where it's blue. And so we are changing the currents, we are changing the mixing, but if we look to a bigger picture. So if you compare the effects of extracting energy from the tides with the effect of the global heating, we found out that the side effects of extracting energy are 10 times smaller than the effect of global warming. So it's better to perturb the ocean in order to extract the energy but fight with the global heating. So just to conclude, since we are in a climate emergency that is caused by burning coal, oil and gas, 
renewable energy is a solution, is the solution, and marine renewable is pa are part of the solution. Thank you.